Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I've been working on a project for the past couple of weeks. Um, back when I was up in Oregon this summer, I helped my friend Randy put together a tape measure Yagi, which we then played around on a mountaintop with and he's been having fun with. And the uh, tape measure Yagi, usually it's used by fox hunters because it's extremely portable. It's a three element Yagi. It uh, provides uh, somewhere, well, they claim around 12 dB of uh, gain, probably a little bit less. But uh, it's a nice little design, and it works great. I was pretty impressed with its performance. And I've had in the back of my mind for a little while that I wanted to build my own Yagi for two meters. I want to play around with two meter single sideband CW. And oftentimes when I'm out here moving around in the West, I'm far away from repeaters. Everything out here is spread way out, you know. And uh, the Slim Jim that I have up on the RV is a really good antenna. It provides about 3 dB of gain, 3 dBi of gain. And before anybody jumps in the comments and says you're wrong, um, when I did the Slim Jim antenna, I linked a document to actual tests done in a lab that shows that it has about 3 dB of uh, gain. And it works great, but I want a Yagi. I want a directional antenna with get a little bit more gain that I can point you know, at a distant repeater. Uh, I can rotate horizontally and play around with uh, single sideband and CW. Uh, so I decided to build my own Yagi. Now, the tape measure Yagi is a great little design, but it has a couple of problems. It's not really made to be put up on a, on a mast in the wind. And uh, we, we discovered up there in Oregon, if there's a breeze, those elements, they vibrate and make noise and they'll flap around if there's enough wind, you know. I wanted something a little bit steadier, a little bit more durable. Um, I also wanted a little bit broader bandwidth. I want an antenna that's going to give me a low SWR where it's resonant at, but still be usable across the entire two meter band with a low SWR. So I wanted broader bandwidth. Um, durability, well, for durability, I don't have one I can show you. I decided to uh, build the structure of the antenna out of PVC pipe common white Schedule 40 PVC that you can buy at a hardware store. It's uh, great for construction material for projects like this because it's easy to work with. It's very cheap. A 10-foot section of the pipe is less than $10. Uh, little fittings and pieces are a couple bucks each, you know, so you can build the structure pretty cheap. So I decided to use that for the structure. To get broader bandwidth on the uh, antenna, I wanted to use fatter elements. If you If you increase the the size of a conductor, of your antenna conductor, you get broader bandwidth. Uh, that's one of the advantages of, say, a cage dipole, where they'll have six or eight wires and a, a circular discs along the antenna to keep them separated, so you create this big structure, you know, and a very broad bandwidth. Well, um, what I decided to use, which I have a lot of still from past experiments, is good old window line. Because window line, you've got two conductors, rigidly uh, separated so that their, their distance stays the same. And if you short both ends of this together, so these are acting as a single wire or a single element, well, it's, it's fatter, you know, and you should get a broader bandwidth. And this can easily be mounted up on the side of PVC. I've done that for the Slim Jim. So it's, it's, uh, it's what I decided to use for the elements. And well, here is my Yagi. <laughs> Hard to get it all in this camera shot. We'll look at it uh, in closer detail momentarily. But as you can see, I used a PVC. There's a T-piece on the end, a uh, three-quarter inch boom. Here's a mast mount here. The center structure, which has a hairpin match. I based this design on the tape measure Yagi because that was a good working design. So I, I started with that and adapted it to this. And does it work? Yeah, it works. We'll look at it a little bit more in detail here in a moment, but first off, let's do a comparison test, an A to B test, against the Slim Jim. All right, I am tuned to the quartzite repeater. The Slim Jim is up on the side of the RV about 12 feet, which would be uh, four meters off the ground. And we are presently at one watt of power. 
Let's see if we can hit the repeater with one watt. Nope, didn't expect so. Let's go to two watts. Nope, okay, three watts. All right, so we just hit it with three watts. KB9 RLW testing. And we're just shy of S4, just shy of S4 on receive. I don't know if that, I'm probably pretty noisy into it. I'm going to go up to five watts in ID. KB9 RLW testing. Yeah, just shy of S4. All right, verify this again. We'll go back down to three watts. Oh, yeah, see, I'm just barely hitting it at three. Let's go up to four. KB9 RLW clear. Yeah, okay, so three to four watts. Just hitting it with three. Okay, let's go outside. I'm going to put up the Yagi and we'll try again. Okay, now we've got the Yagi up and pointed towards Quartzite. Let's go back down. Let's start at a half a watt. All right, half a watt. Nope. One watt. Nope. One and a half. Oh, there it is. KB9 RLW testing. And just shy of S5. So today that gives me, what, 1S unit, 6 dB of gain. So we're somewhere between 6 and 12 dB of gain. And I'm hitting it with 1.5 watts versus 3 watts. So half the power to hit the, uh, to hit the repeater up there in Quartzite. So yeah, the Yagi is an improvement. KB9 RLW was testing and is now clear. Okay, this is the antenna. Now, I'm sorry about the... Oh, it's kind of hard to get everything into one shot here <laughs> inside the RV. There we go. I can pull back a little bit so you can kind of see the size of it. This is the reflector back here, the driven element, and then the director up front. Um, this piece here is where the mast connects. This is a little hanger and uh, boy this is really hard to do. I can try to zoom in. I don't know if it's going to focus right though. Yeah it looks like it's still in focus. Uh, it's basically the tape measure Yagi but with the window line. Now on the uh, elements the window line is mounted flat against this half-inch PVC, and I'm sorry about the imperial dimensions. I don't know what this pipe or how this pipe is uh, measured over in the UK or other places. And the uh, boom is made with three-quarter inch PVC. And there's one, two boom pieces, and in the middle there's a cross piece that takes three-quarter on all sides. So for the driven element, I've got a little bushing, uh, an adapter, and a small piece of three-quarter to get the half-inch out here to mount the driven element on. Now there, you can kind of see the coax connection. All of this stuff is detailed up close in photographs in the blog write-up, so I'll give you that link in the last section here. It's actually down in the description, but it's basically using a hairpin match, which you can see here. It's pinched together. I did that during tuning to uh, get the match right and get the SWR down. I started with this spread out and I started pinching it down as I measured the SWR to find the point where it was almost one to one. 
And then I've got the coax uh, strain relief on this little two inch screw. And that also stands the coax off of the antenna when it's vertical. And speaking of uh, orientation, this piece here is a little hanger. Take the screw out. And I think they use this to hang PVC. It just slides along and holds the PVC in there. So that's what I connect my mast to there and I can rotate that. So I can have the antenna horizontally oriented or rotate it over here and have it vertically oriented. And then I just drilled a hole through uh, into the, the what, light, light on it. Maybe I get some more light. Yeah, okay. Like I say, it's hard to do this inside the RV. But I got a hole that I drilled through and I just put a screw in there to lock it in like that so it doesn't want to move now. So that's how I can rotate it horizontal and vertical. Um, yeah, as we saw in the test, it's given me somewhere around 9 dB of uh, gain. Uh, and I guess the front to back is uh, somewhere between 25 and 30 dB ratio, according to specs. I had no way of measuring that. Uh, the ends, which are all detailed in the blog right up Somebody was asking on one of the uh, Patreon posts why I cut them at an angle like that. Well, it does look cooler, but uh, this keeps it from whistling in the wind. Um, if these are flat, when the wind goes across it, it'll, it'll hum and whistle. I found that if you cut that at a 45 degree angle, it doesn't whistle. <laughs> so it's a pretty simple antenna to put together. Um, got a PVC T piece at each end that's three quarter to half inch. You got the cross piece, little adapters for the half inch out here. Um, the blog write-up has all the details on assembly, but you do want to be very, very, very precise. It's extremely sensitive. Uh, when I was tuning it for SWR, uh, or for the, the resonant point, what I was doing was I was shortening the ends of the driven element. And I could bring these in only a quarter of an inch at a time to bring it up almost one megahertz to one and a half megahertz with uh, shortening the element by a total of a half an inch. So <laughs> very twitchy, but once you get it locked in, it's great. And the other thing that I think I mentioned in the blog write up that's important is to make sure that the overall elements are centered on the boom so that everything is centered. Uh, what else did people ask about? Oh, some people noticed that I put the window line on the inside of this one. And on this side, and this side of this one, why did I do that? Well, if I'm outside setting the antenna up and I want to set it down on the ground, the uh, wires are protected, see? So <laughs> that was intentional. So, you know, that's just a quick little overview. If you want to see more detail um, and want to build one yourself, go and click on the blog entry link in the video description. All the details are there, all the dimensions and measurements are there. And as long as you are, as long as you precisely follow those, you'll get a good working antenna. So that's my two meter Yagi. The complete write up with all of the dimensions and specifications, if you want to build one yourself, I wrote up in a blog entry with images, lots of images, and a page that has all the measurements uh, and uh, hints and tips on how to build it or how I built it and what I ran into. All of that is linked in the uh, blog, which is down in the video description below. So scroll down and uh, you can find that if you want to go and try to build one of these yourself. It's pretty easy to build. You could probably knock it out in a day. And it's uh, pretty cheap to build too. The parts aren't that expensive. So I'm happy with it. It's durable. It's going to last uh, probably quite a while. I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. And that's it. Well, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.